beat each other great, which I love. I mean, that stuff's great. But it's totally not going to solve any of the problems at the root of, of what's going on here in America. So, I, so some of you, and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate the support I'm getting from the Asian American community, but some of you, I'm sure, doubt whether or not I can win. I understand. It's cool. I'm a serial entrepreneur, and I understand how to get things done in the key deliverables. So one of the big issues you all have is like, hey, Asian American, we're only 5.8% of the population. Like, uh, like, how is he going to be able to compete with these big name Democrats and, and politicians who have like massive levels of resources, etc. Cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to share with you all something that I hope excites you half as much as it excites me. Again, I'm an Asian guy who likes math. So what I need to do to launch my campaign uh, and win the presidency is win the state of Iowa. Now, Iowa has 3.1 million people. How many or what percent of Iowans do you think participated in the Democratic caucus in 2016? 40,000. So 40,000 Iowans. So, fewer than 6% of Iowans actually participated in the Democratic caucus. It was 170,000 in 2016, it will be about 200,000 in 2020. So again, numbers. How many Democrats are going to run for president in 2020? 20. <laughs> about 20, let's say. So if you have 200,000 Iowans participating in the Democratic caucus, and the reason that number is so low is because a caucus is a two-hour commitment where you have to go and publicly say, I support Andrew Yang for president to your neighbors. You have to self-organize in a room. You go through multiple rounds. You argue with each other. You debate. It takes two hours. Plus, it's the winter in Iowa, and Iowa is very, very cold. So if you have 200,000 Iowans voting and 20 candidates, how many do I need to win the whole thing? I need approximately 30 to 40,000 Iowans to vote for me because 15 to 20 percent would be enough to put me in the top several candidates if there are 20 candidates who run. So what seems very, very difficult actually boils down to whether or not I can get 30 to 40,000 Iowans to vote for me in 2020. And I have now been to Iowa five times, and what I do is I say to them, how many of you notice stores closing where you live? And all of their hands go up. And then I ask them, why are your stores closing? And they say, Amazon. And I say, that's exactly right. Is that going to get worse or is that going to get better? Worse. Worse. And then I give them the big question, I say, what are you going to do about it? And then they say, what can we do about it? And then I tell them what you can do about it is you can make me president, and then I will return to you $1,000 that right now is getting sucked up into Seattle and out of Iowa. You can rebuild your communities and your Main Street economy. You create 40,000 jobs here in Iowa, and you would give your children a reason to stay. And I'll tell you, that message works really, really well in Iowa. I can get 30 to 40,000 of them to respond to that message. I can finish in the top three in Iowa in 2020. And then imagine the headlines around the country and the world when I finish one, two, or three in Iowa where the Asian man who wants to give everyone $1,000 comes out of nowhere and wins Iowa. That is achievable. And that is achievable because of all of you here tonight. Because if you contribute to my campaign, I'm going to spend it all in Iowa. <laughs> I'm going to bring it to Iowa, take your dollars, and say, hey, I have a guy who's dropping out of Harvard Law School as we speak to go to Iowa City and work on my campaign. Because he's a young Jewish man, and he thinks this country is going to hell. And he says, you know what? If I can do something to stop it, I'm going to leave Harvard Law and help Andrew Yang become president. And that, that, this kid is mega talented, and there are many more like him that are working on my campaign. Matt Schinner is over there. He also went to Harvard Law. Let's give him a round of applause.
So with people like that, and your resources, and the Asian American community behind me, I can win Iowa, we can shock the world, and we can make history. Because I gotta tell you, the people of Iowa, they take so much pride in the fact that they elected Barack Obama president, and also they, they actually take a lot of pride in the fact they elected Jimmy Carter president, for those of you guys remember this. So Jimmy Carter came out of Iowa, Barack Obama came out of Iowa, and Andrew Yang is going to come out of Iowa in 2020. Uh, I'm going to close with something, with, I'm going to relate to, uh, to you all some things I said to the APAPA board and uh, another organization of Chinese Americans, is that Asian Americans right now, raise your hand if you feel like we're allowed to become this successful in this country, but we're not allowed to become this successful. Is that what I mean? Many of us feel that way. Um, we feel like we should just be grateful for the fact that we're able to make a good living and provide for our families, and we shouldn't uh, try and ascend past a certain point in American leadership, our American society. Now, there are a few things I would want to impart to you all, is many of you, I believe, would enjoy an Asian American becoming president in 2021. I would certainly enjoy it. I, that, that would be me. And then I would rename the White House the Gold House, have regular dim sum offerings, get the best Asian chefs, and we'd have giant tastings in the White House. Oh yeah, you guys like that one in particular, right? Um, but, but many of you think that it's not possible for an Asian American uh, to, to get that far, even though I just shared with you the numbers in Iowa, we can totally do it. So the, the first thing is that um, Asian Americans have a tendency to work their way up within organizations and to be strong workers and think that that will be rewarded. But I'm here to share with you all, politics does not work that way. And if we wait and we think if we have an Asian American mayor or congressman or even governor or senator, that that person will, will just be anointed president because they do good work, that will never happen. That is not the way this country functions. And that in order for there to be an Asian American president, first of all, one of us has to run. Right? The second thing is that we think we do not have that much power because we're only 5.8% of the population. We're spread out in different parts of the country. We don't have a critical mass. And politicians more or less ignore us. And I will tell you all, the politicians do more or less ignore us. Um, that I've talked to people in the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and they do not consider us a very important constituency. At best, they consider us a source of money somewhat. Um, but we don't vote at very high levels. We don't really even donate at the levels that our wealth and income would suggest. So they do not care about us. They honestly don't. Like, I, I have a friend who was with Chuck Schumer, uh, and Chuck Schumer has a lot of Asian constituents, and he just asked Chuck, he said, can you name one of your Asian donors? And he couldn't do it. And he's got a lot of them. He, he couldn't even do it. So, right now, there is this sense that we're an afterthought in political life, and we are. Um, but this is a chance for us to upend that in two ways. So 5.8% of the population, not a big number, unless you have a wide open democratic field and there are 20 candidates. If you have 20 candidates and there's an Asian American candidate, let's call him Andrew Yang, and he has a significant proportion of the 5.8%, let's call it three or 4%, that alone is enough to make me a top 10 candidate in a crowded field. That alone is enough to get me onto the main debate stage alongside Elizabeth Warren, Cory Booker, uh, you know, Bernie Sanders, and the rest of them. And how great would it be for our community to have an Asian American up there on that stage next summer? And that is completely realistic just based on the 5.8% of the population that we are. The second thing is that you in California are used to being an afterthought in presidential contests because you guys are very late in the process and by the time it gets to you, it's already been decided. But you, you might have noticed that they actually moved California up to number five this year. I don't know, how many of you knew that? They got moved up to number five. You guys would because you're very politically active. Most of you didn't know that. Oh, this is exciting. So before you guys were like way, way in the back, you're like 28 and like no one cared. 
So the, the Democrats of California said, we're tired of being an afterthought. We're going to move all the way up to number five. So the order this year, in 2020, this cycle, is Iowa number one, New Hampshire number two, South Carolina number three, Nevada number four, and then California number five. So if you have a crowded field, which you do, the odds of the nomination being decided by the time it gets to California, very, very low. California is actually going to be a hotbed. California is going to decide who is going to be the Democratic nominee. And so for the first time in, in the time I can remember, Asian Americans will be an incredibly important voting bloc because who Asian Americans in California support has a much, much higher chance of becoming the Democratic nominee. So this is an historic chance. Again, I guess, hope you guys appreciate this. I like I'm an Asian guy who likes numbers. I figured out the numbers, and this is the lever. And the third thing I'm going to close on and leave you all with is that sense that we have that we're somewhat uh, diminished or marginalized or second class citizens. The main reason I'm running for president is that I have been around the people that are supposed to run our country and we are as smart, as good, as educated, as moral, and we love this country and our families just as much as anyone else and there's no reason why one of us cannot be the president of the United States in 2021. So thank you to CC, thank you Ken, thank you Joel, <laughs> thank you Anthony, and thank you all for being here tonight. We'd love to meet you all individually, uh, but let's show what we can do, and let's show what Asian Americans can do when we get our, our heart and spirit into something, and we're going to change the history of this country together. Thank you all very, very much.